Hey, what's up guys? Quick video blog for you. This is part two of a three-part series of providing an overview of the macronutrients. The first video was on protein. This one is going to be on carbohydrates. And the third one following up will be on fats. Now, let's jump into this. What are carbohydrates, guys? Carbohydrates are a form of energy for the body. And if we were to dissect the different types of carbs, we'd find that there's three main parts of carbohydrates. There's simple refined carbs, simple natural carbs, and then complex carbs. Let's break them down. What's a simple refined carb? A simple refined carb, guys, is something like um, table sugar, high fructose corn syrup, uh, soda, candy, all those things that we've been taught are extremely bad for us. Now, these are considered monosaturides and disaturides, which provide an instant spike in energy. It instantly spikes our insulin levels, providing the body a quick spike, a quick splurge in energy. Um, in addition to that, there's complex carbohydrates, kind of the flip side, the reverse side of the coin, where simple refined carbs are fast acting, we have complex carbohydrates that are slow acting, providing a slow sustained release of energy. Now, these consist of fiber-based and whole grain-based um, carbohydrates. They include breads, rice, um, oatmeal, and pastas. And a lot of the times, guys, these are processed carbs. And if we were to put them into their scientific class, they're called oleosaturides and polysaturides. Now, last but not least, the third type of carbohydrate is a simple natural carb, which would include the fruits and the vegetables, which are also high in fiber. And they're typically unprocessed, which is, uh, which is in, the, in the world of food, the, the more unprocessed an item is, typically the better off you're going to be. Because what happens in the process of, of, of being processed, what happens is that it's stripped of its nutrients. The integrity of the vitamins and minerals that are naturally in these food items are stripped away. Uh, for example, white bread versus whole grain bread. You know, whole grain bread is going to be comprised of a lot of vitamins and minerals and, and a higher amount of fiber, whereas the white bread is pretty plain and, and doesn't do much for us. Um, a, a good rule of thumb, if you haven't heard this already, is when you go to the grocery store, if you follow the perimeter of the grocery store, you know, the outside aisles surrounding all the, the aisles within the store, what you'll find is a lot of the unprocessed foods that we need to stick to. You know, the meats, which are unprocessed um, proteins, and then unprocessed carbohydrates would be your fruits and your vegetables. Um, you might even find some of your whole grains there as well. Um, typically, um, there's a few rules to the exception, but for the most part, um, if it doesn't have a barcode, you're pretty, you know, you're in the right direction. Most of the carbs that we would want to consume, if we are consuming carbs, don't need a label. So an, a, something to, to think about as you're, you're shopping for your groceries. Um, now, we talked about the simple carbs. Well, well, let's combine these as simple carbs, and we'll combine them as, as complex carbs. Simple is fast acting, fast absorbing, creating a fast spike in energy where the complex is slow, and you know, a slow sustained release of energy. Now let's just take those two and let's talk about the timing in which, because they're both beneficial, but it comes down to the timing in which you take these. So when I say simple carbs, you know, these are oftentimes considered bad carbohydrates, but in reality, it comes down to when you consume it. Because there are great times to have a simple carb where you need a quick spike in energy, but there's also great times to take the slow complex carbs. So let's, let's break that down a little bit. When's a great time to have a simple carbohydrate? When you want a simple carb or a fast acting carb, you want it when your insulin levels are already low. So when you're waking up in the morning, you're coming off of a six, seven, eight hour um, fast or a, a state of deprivation, your insulin levels are low, and so you want to elevate those. And so in the morning, it's a fantastic time to have fruits or vegetables or um, things like honey, um, some of those sugary type of foods to help spook or spike your insulin. Now, another time would be right after your workout. You depleted the glycogen in your muscles, insulin levels are lowered, and so we want to bring those back up. 
And as we, we finish our workout and we consume our post-workout shake, we want to ensure that the, these simple carbohydrates are within that shake, um, supplementing and coupling with the protein that we're going to be consuming as well. So when you work out and you go to take your, your protein shake, you should have simple carbs in there because it's going to help restore your insulin levels. But in addition to that, what happens is that the protein molecules is going to piggyback onto those simple carbohydrates. And those simple carbohydrates are going to rush through your entire body, helping provide a, a release of that protein, getting it, all those protein molecules into the cells at a, at a higher pace. So a huge benefit there. It, it's something that, I mean, it's when I, when I think of structuring a post-workout shake, protein first, simple carb second. Like those are the fundamentals that need to be in there. Um, so those are the, the two greatest times to have simple carbs. Now, one of the greatest times to have complex carbs or slow released, um, slow absorbing complex carbs that are releasing slow uh, sustained amounts of energy. That's gonna be typically throughout the day, even a mixture in the morning. Okay, when you have breakfast, you might have things like oatmeal. Um, it's gonna help sustain your energy levels throughout the mid-morning and then maybe for lunch you'll have some and then up into your workout. Um, you, after your workout, you really don't need these carbs because like I said, carbohydrates are a form of energy. Your, your body is only going to you, is only gonna require carbs if you plan on expelling that energy. Um, there's no sense in having carbs, you know, 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m. at night because what's gonna follow that is an activity. What's gonna follow that is sleep and you're gonna put your body into a state of lethargic nature and it's not going to have any reason to burn these carbs and burn this energy therefore it's going to be stored as fat and that's the exact opposite of what we're trying to do here so um, take that into account now i'm sure you're all wondering how much carbs do i need to take um, it, it's it's one of those things that's hard to to really judge everybody's body is different it depends on your weight it depends on your overall um, energy output and your metabolism but a couple of rules of thumb if you are let's say you know you're trying to cut you're trying to reduce body fat or you're trying to expose your abs then you know 0.5 to 1 grams of carbs per pound of body weight okay now if you are in a bulking phase or in a position of where you are, you're naturally extremely skinny and you have a hard time putting on size and mass, then you're gonna wanna up your carbs and probably go around two to three grams of carbohydrates per pound of body weight. And if you're um, an endurance athlete, let's say you're a swimmer or a triathlete, a cyclist, a sprinter, etc. You, you're gonna, definitely going to need a lot more carbs because the amount of energy you're expelling on a daily basis is far superior to, to most individuals. And so you're going to be wanting to take 3 to 3.5 grams of carbs uh, per pound of body weight. Now, with that being said, guys, I'll, I'll let you know what I'm consuming. I'm currently 183 pounds. Um, when I'm coming off of a, 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 um, a bulk phase and I'm trying to cut down for either a shoot or a, a competition, um, what I'll typically do, or at least as of right now, I'm at 263 grams of carbs, which it really isn't that high and it's not low. It's pretty medium. And I'll taper those down as time progresses and as I approach the, the date of my show or my shoot. And so I'll go from 263 grams and I'll um, reduce it, you know, 8 to 10% week over week. And I'll get to a point where I'm about 100 grams and I'll hold the 100 grams for a couple weeks. And then I go into a complete state of depletion where I'm trying to dehydrate myself as well as expel all of the carbohydrates, all the glycogen within my blood um, completely out of my, out of my body to get that really tight, elastic looking look on my muscles where the, the muscles are, are really, or the skin is really wrapping around my muscles and it's really tight. There's no water, there's no carbs. Um, filling up those muscles, making me look more bloated than I need to be. So that's that's my approach. Um, with all this being said, I I don't think you need carbs. I really don't think you need carbs. Um, it's going to be tough to 
to wane off of carbohydrates because most of us are used to having a high amount of carbohydrates, um, whether we know we are taking it or not. But um, if you're one of those individuals who is really trying to cut down or look absolutely shredded for the summer, um, expose your abs, your intercostals, your serratus, and, and see these muscle groups that you've never seen before, I would highly recommend that you drop your carbs. I mean, that's where you're gonna see a significant difference in your physique. When you drop your carbs, guys, you, you're gonna feel a, a state of, you know, you're gonna feel lethargic, you're gonna feel tired, uh, you might even feel a little slow mentally, but only at first. Your body just needs to cope with this, this new change in, in its body's process. And what happens when you no longer take carbs is your body's gonna start attacking other areas for energy. And what it's going to attack is, um, depending on the activity you're, you're doing, it's either going to attack your fat storage, which is always a plus, or it's going to attack your protein storage. So as we drop carbohydrates, we up our protein. Okay? It's, it's called protein sparing or carb sparing, which means as one drops, the other increases and vice versa. So if we were on a really high carbohydrate diet, our, carbs wouldn't ha or our protein wouldn't have to be as high. But if we're dropping carbs, then our protein has to be higher because it does replace that energy storage. So it provides a little more fuel for the body. So um, in a perfect world, I would suggest if you're trying to cut, trying to lose weight, trying to expose those abs, lower your carbs, up your protein, and, and, and be patient, be disciplined, because your body's going to feel change, but it's also going to look fantastic look better than it's ever had so um, I hope this is a, a nice little overview for you guys I didn't want to dig too deep and get too scientific uh, I just wanted to provide some some you know high level overview give you some information that you can apply today and um, I, I hope it helps guys so I'm out take care God bless look forward to the third series you know on fats we're gonna do that video real soon so look forward to that see you then I'm out